As, of course, she's unconscious now. I call the ambulance. This time they take her to hospital. They find she's got a big subdural hemorrhage. She'd fallen and hit her head. And she wasn't treated, all because she was diagnosed with COVID and didn't get treatment. The deaths in nursing homes, which uh, perhaps uh, has been forgotten about, but I was, uh, I had first-hand experience of this because uh, I uh, was a doctor who looked after uh, a, a whole nursing home full of, it was 58 patients, 54 with COVID. And uh, I was the only doctor that went, all the other doctors uh, didn't stop going. Uh, so I was the only regular GP that went. All the nursing staff also uh, were either um, isolated or didn't come. So the whole running of the nursing home was done by agency staff that was shipped in from, um, you know, who didn't know the patients at all. And the medical uh, care was done by teams from uh, the public hospital. They didn't know the patients either. But what I noticed was that the patients were not being treated according to their needs and often were put on morphine and midazolam. And this was often for very spurious reasons. For example, the impression that this patient who had stopped uh, eating and drinking and had become somnolent probably because she wasn't allowed, or he wasn't allowed visitors anymore because the whole place was in lockdown and couldn't see anyone, was confined to a room and uh, didn't even go out to have uh, meals in a common meal area, became depressed. But the diagnosis was patient impression dying. And then the patient was written up for morphine and midazolam. And I came along and I had a look and I couldn't find much wrong with the patient except she was pretty quiet and didn't move much. Uh, but there was nothing specifically wrong with her. So I stopped the morphine and the dazolam. I stopped a few of her other tablets too. And she improved. And, and then uh, when the lockdown ceased about six weeks later, she was walking around smiling and happy. You see, what happens in these uh, situations when you restrict people's freedom and that, but they become depressed? And uh, it wasn't due to any illness at all. Of the 54 patients who had diagnosed with COVID, uh, I wish to uh, iterate that n none had a respiratory illness. There, I was wondering, where were the sick people? There was, there was none. Uh, I, I'm serious. It, it's uh, a lot of COVID people positive do not have symptoms, e even in the elderly. Uh, the other thing that uh, was um, most unfortunate was that when they did get sick, and I, I wanted to send them to send, call the ambulance to send them to the hospital, the hospital told the ambulance not to um, send the patient to hospital. We'll send the doctor to you. So the doctor went to the nursing home. And uh, uh, I didn't find out until the next day about this particular patient that I wanted to send because I thought she was having a stroke. And she's still there the next day. This, now she's completely unconscious. I read the doctor's notes. The doctor had said, oh, it looks like she's delirious and sent her off for a urine test. Now, as, of course, she's unconscious now. I call the ambulance. This time they take her to hospital they find she's got a big subdural hemorrhage. She'd fallen and hit her head and she wasn't treated, all because she was diagnosed with COVID and didn't get treatment. Now this would have happened in all those nursing homes that were, um, that were locked down in that period of time, July, August, 2020. And I don't know if you remember, there was a spike of about 880 deaths in that short period of time. And it was completely out of character with the rest of the year. You know, the deaths were just like that, and then they went up like that, and then down like that, and then flat again. Now that all needs to be investigated. That was a ter 
the whole thing's a big cover-up. They have tried an investigation in St Basil's, which is, seems to go on and on without any definite conclusions. But I just wanted to share that with you as one of the probably many, many things that have been covered up in this, in this um, whole scheme. It's a, so much fraud and uh, it's unbelievable. Look, we know how corrupt APRA is. We know these laws are going to go to the states. I just want to let my colleague, William Bay, who's done intensive experience with APRA, to tell you how corrupt APRA really is.